on this episode, Crazy Circle Math. I just like say one, but draw two. <laughs> Which, by the creator's own words, is amazing, good, helpful, and certainly causes unique states of mind. Uh... Hi everybody, I'm Christian, this is LazyDevs Academy. Welcome to a little shmup tutorial, episode 24. Can you believe it? 24. This was supposed to be a basic shmup and it takes such a long time. Well, that's the nature of game development. You kind of like think it's easy, it's gonna be just like a little thing and it's not. It usually turns out to be a journey. It turns out to be more than you think it is. That's normal. We're getting there though. We kind of like picked something that's quite manageable as a size. So even though it seems like it's going very long, it's still not completely exploding in size. We are in the final stretch. Today, something I wanted to do is I want to focus on um, aimed bullets. Bullets that are aimed at the player, that's something that we want to do. And we want bullets that are um, spreading around, like, like you know, huge, huge amount of bullets being shot at the same time. Two different concepts uh, that are kind of like related. There's underlying ideas underneath that we're going to uh, address. We're going to do a deep dive into trigonometry. But first, before we go there, let us load our shmup. Um, let us go a little bit through the to-do list. Uh, any behavior, it's, let's just like say it's kind of finished-ish. Hmm. Enemy bullets is kind of finished, but we want to have uh, two things, aim bullets and spread shots. Uh, pickups is something we're gonna do maybe next episode. Uh, bomb is something we have to think about. And there's a boss and then we have to also, oh yeah, nicer screens also fits to the question of um, scoring, something that we haven't discussed at all, uh, but we should, scoring. Um, but from the last episode, something I noticed while I was like editing some of the videos, I noticed a, a pe pe peculiarity. Remember how the shaking didn't quite work and I was uh, like, okay, maybe they're not exactly at an integer position. But why aren't they at an integer position? It's something that I want to, to, to think about. And I think it has to do with a fly-in uh, mission that we wrote, where we're using our magical, magical indie function for the, uh, for the ships to ease into the position. And we said like, okay, yeah, where they, when they're close enough, we snap them into the position, but we snap them only in the Y axis in the Y dimension, not in the X dimension. And if you watch closely, they're not perfectly even like, they, there's a gap in the center. They're not perfectly spread. There's a, like the gap in the center is slightly wider than the gaps in the outer uh, uh, areas. So I think we need to, we can fix this if we just copy this line and make the ships snap in the X position as well. See, now you could you actually could see them snapping horizontally. Yeah, you could see that. You could see that. That's good. That's good. So I think we're gonna get uh it's you know, it doesn't fix anything right now. It wasn't necessarily broken, but it's just like a tiny little better. And I think there are some little problems that we encountered during development that we could have avoided if we've done that uh, from the get-go, but oh well. Another thing I wanted to fix, a little, little, little detail. So um, Sebastian, my uh, my trusted musician, uh, uh, played through an early demo of the of the game and he said, he said he thought the laser was way too loud. And I agree uh, on, on second thought. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to make the laser less loud. I'm gonna, what, what about this? Yeah, that seems good. Let's keep it at the gray level. Okay, let's try this. So now it's not as grating and you can hear the other sound effects more now, I feel. Like now the other F sound effects are more prominent because the laser is no longer overpowering everything. 
maybe we need to uh, make it even s softer. But you know, just something that we are constantly adjusting as we go. That's why it's good to have different people play your game. They will give you different type, type of feedback depending on their particular skill set. All right, but that is enough for now. Let us discuss trigonometry. Let us really discuss what sine and cosine are all about. And for this, I'm gonna save this, um, this shmup P8 and I'm gonna reboot Pico8. And we're gonna do a little, a little, little experiment. I'm gonna, gonna save this as sine. <laughs> I'm gonna no, actually save this as trig for trigonometry. Okay, so um, we're gonna open a new file and we're gonna go function uh, init uh, and function draw, draw and function update. Actually, update is gonna go before draw, I guess, right? That that's something I've figured out. I think we did figure it out. Okay, and so something I want to do is I want to like exemplify how we're moving things right now and how we can also move things and why, what kind of role trigonometry plays in this. Trigonometry is a generally a topic that people hate. People don't like trigonometry. Trigonometry, oh my gosh. It is a subject that people say like, oh no, it's a thing I learned in school, it's so useless. <laughs> <laughs> Again, with the, why am I doing this voice? I don't understand. It's a perfectly uh, reasonable thing to think. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, look down on people who are like, this is, this is, I don't know what to do with this. However, like with modulo, like with other, th like a lot of things in math, they're super useful for game development and and sine and cosine are perfect example of this. These are just mwah. let me show you. So um, I'm gonna go do a P set on 64, 64, uh, seven. So I'm gonna gonna do a, a seven uh, that is gonna be a white pixel in the center of the screen. Let's run this. Okay, there is the white pixel in the center of the screen. So far so good. Now I'm gonna do a P set x, y, we defined the uh, uh, variables x and y, and we're gonna turn this red. So now we have a red pixel there, right? And then we're gonna do uh, if b, t, and p, uh, let's do just b, t, n, um, zero, then, and uh, so zero was, I think the first ones are up and, up and down? I, I forgot. Let's just find out. Let's just find out through experimentation. Oh yeah, okay, good. Sideways, but in the wrong direction. Uh, and then we can fill in the bu buttons. I just want to move this little pixel around. I want to create like a little exper experimental uh, card, experiment, uh, where we can just move things around and figure th things out. Something like this. So now I can move a little pixel around and that's good. That's very, very good. All right. So this is, uh, actually let me, let me, let me maybe even, let me even, that's, I think might, might be a good idea. Let me do a print of X. I'm gonna call it X dot dot uh, X um, on one, one and with the color five. And for the Y, the same thing, something like this, something like this. Okay, you can see the coordinates in the upper left corner, perfect. This is the way we're moving this simple pixel. We just ripped it up in a, in a couple of seconds. The way we move this simple uh, single pixel is the way we move everything in our game right now. This is how we do things. We have two variables, X and Y, and we manipulate them. If you want something to fly left, we're gonna change the x value. If we want something to, to fly right, we're also gonna change the x value, adding or subtracting something from the x value. Same with up and down. When we want to move something up, we add and subtract something from y. And if we want to move something down, we add something to y. This allows us to move things on the screen and it's fine. Now, this is really great if you want to move things straight along, you know, uh, the cardinal directions. If you want to move straight up and down or left and right, 
it's not so great if you're moving diagonal. I mean, we can move diagonally, but we can kind of have to change both values at the same time, and that's kind of awkward. So yeah, you can do that, but, but it's kind of not ideal. However, where it gets really, really odd and weird is when we want to move things in a circle. Ugh. Just like, how are you going to move this dot if you wanted to just like move move the red dot around in a circle around the yellow um, white dot? How would you do that even, right? We don't have the tools to do that. We could like try to do some kind of like move it down and at some point move diagonally and at some point move it left, like a whole bunch of if statement maybe, but that wouldn't even result in that. That would be a very awkward circle, a whole bunch of if statements. That would be really, really awkward. And then I can even actually show you, uh, I can even do like a um, uh, circ. Uh, 64, 64, let's, let's go with, I don't know, uh, 14. And we're gonna make it again, we're gonna make it dark. So you can see the circle, right? Following the circle, there's just so many stairs here and constantly changes direction. Like you're adding sometimes X, sometimes Y, it's just like wild. How do we find out the coordinates on of, of these, um, these gray pixels that we should move on if you want to circle it? It's just like, what's the math behind it? Well, the math turns out is sine and cosine. That's just what it does. Sine and cosine are responsible for the X and Y coordinates of dots on a circle. So you can figure out the, all the gray pixels just using sine and cosine. That's the one thing they're responsible for. And sure, the actual function, if you plot it out, looks like wavy line, but actually that's not necessarily what sine and cosine are for. They're not there to be wavy. I mean, it's nice that they're wavy, but they're there to just plot a circle, basically. Let me show you what I mean. Let me define a new uh, variable. We're gonna call this ang, which is gonna be angle, the angle at which we are drawing, okay? And then here we're gonna go sine uh, x equals sine angle. And here we're gonna go y equals cosine angle. So sine and cosine, you know these, these words, these are like brothers, these are like X and Y, because sine and cosine are responsible for X and Y. Sine is, is responsible for X and cosine is, is responsible for Y. Both are wavy lines, just one is shifted a little bit. They are very, very similar uh, graphs, similar function to each other. So now we just basically take sine, we feed it this, this angle variable, which is zero at this point, but whatever and we just put the result into x. Same thing with cosine, we just take the, uh, the angle variable, the same variable, we feed the cosine, we feed it cosine and uh, put the result into y. Let's just see what happens. Well, I mean, uh, okay, we are, <laughs> the red dot is in the left, upper left corner. The reason why is sine and cosine are describing a so-called um, a, a standard circle. I'm not sure, sure what the English term for this. It's they describe as, um, the, the coordinates of a standard circle. It's not this circle that we're drawing here. It's a different circle, a standard circle. However, this standard circle can easily become any circle that you want to draw. And so let me just first show the standard circle and then we're gonna figure out the math on how we can turn the standard circle into our circle here. Right, 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 right. So the standard circle. So let me tell you this tale of the standard circle. I'm just gonna draw the circle first. It's gonna be a nice red circle. This is our standard circle. That is the circle that sine and cosine are drawing. That they're just responsible to draw a circle. Isn't that crazy? Just an entire function, two function even, to just draw a circle. And then uh, we're gonna put up some lines. This is a, a graph, right? This is a graph. You've seen this maybe in your, in school where we're drawing a graph. Okay, okay, good. And so uh, this is X, obviously. This is Y, obviously. No, so far, no problem. Uh, now, this is circle, this is the origin. So this is this coordinate 0, 0.0, this one, the, ce the center. So the standard circle is centered. The, cent the center of the standard circle is centered around uh, the zero, 0.0 coordinate. That's why our, our, 
our little red dot was in the left corner, left upper left corner of the screen because zero zero and Pico eight is in the upper left corner, right? So off the bat, we kind of have to move things around. So that's something we have to consider. Another thing that you have to consider is that the radius of the circle, right? Here, and the radius, how big this circle is, uh, like this distance here, right? This blue line. This distance, the radius, that is one. And therefore, all the coordinates that we have here is these are just one. These are one, all of these are one. In math, that's a really, really fine circle. That's you can do a lot with this. In Pico 8, that's a tiny circle. That's that's a pixel. That's just a minuscule, tiny little circle. We we need to enlarge the circle and we need to move the center of that circle to whatever our circle is on the screen, not just in the upper left corner. So two things, move the circle and enlarge it, right? Right, so that's what we're gonna do. First, let us move the circle to the center of the screen. We're just gonna go plus 64, plus 64. Just all of the dots of the of the circle, I'm just gonna move, to, gonna be get moved 64 pixels down and 64 pixels to the right. And there it is, there is our little red dot. Now we want our circle to get bigger. Um, so, you know, this uh, gray circle that I drew that is, um, has the radius of 14. So let us just uh, make the radius bigger. And the way we do this is we take the result of sine and multiply it by how big we want our circle to be. In this case, we want it to have radius 14 and not one. Instead of radius one, we want to have 14. So just we multiply it by 14. And that's it. So first multiply, then add, uh, and that's it. So now you see our little red dot is on the gray outline. We can make it maybe slightly outside the gray outline so it's more visible. Okay, so it's now slightly outside on the outside. That's perfect. Now, the cool thing is like, okay, it's, it's just there, it's sitting there, it's not moving anywhere, right? So let's, let's just make it move. Um, let us do something like this. Uh, I'm gonna remove the movement that we had previously, and this time I'm gonna do something like this. Ang plus minus one. Uh, uh, actually, ang minus one and ang plus one. Now, I'm also gonna print ang on the screen so you can see what is happening. I wanna, uh, I, I wanna see what value ang is. All right, you can see it's zero now. I'm gonna press the button. Well, ang is increasing and decreasing, but the dot is not moving. Is something broken? Did we get something wrong? No, it, things are working. Dot is actually rotating around the circle. It's just like, we just have to talk about the uh, angle units that we create is using. So let's just say, let's just say we start here here at the bottom of the circle, right? So that means this would be zero degrees. <laughs> this is, n oh man, draw and writing with the mouse is, is amazing. 90 degrees, this is 180 degrees. Uh, this is, uh, oh my gosh, this is 270 degrees. Oh man, I, I didn't come here for, ma for math. So this, actually this point is not just zero degrees, but it's also 360 degrees, right? And then uh, you can also say that, oh, okay, well here if in the corner, uh, if you go like some, somewhere like this, right? If you go like this, then that is actually a very, very uh, popular amount of degrees, 45 degrees. Right, that's 45 degrees. And then uh, at here we would have uh, 315 degrees. These numbers sound, seem odd, but they, okay. That's how degrees work, right? I just want us to spend some time with the degrees. Okay, so this is something that we are all, all familiar with. Now in Pico 8, we, we are not working with a system that goes through um, between zero and 360. Instead, we're working with a system that goes from zero to one. 
which sounds insane, but that's true. We're just working with comma values all the time. So zero, if we're going from zero to one, that gives you a full circle, right? So I'm gonna write, use this blue color here to indicate what Pico Edge is using. This is gonna be zero, so that's the same, but it's also gonna be one in terms of angles, in terms of angles. This means that up here, when we have 180 degrees, that's going to be 0 0.5 for pico 8. That's an angle of 0 0.5 in, in, pico 8, in pico 8's values. And here we have 0 0.25. And here we have um, 0 0.75. Okay, and then here on the 45 degrees, that's 0 0.1, oh, but, 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 but that's not a one, that's not a one, one, that, that's how I got all the bad grades in, in math in, in my school. I just like say one, but draw two. <laughs> and see, I still made it out. Okay, so 0 0.3, here's 3.75, I think, a 0. Uh, six, uh, two, five, 0.875, I think. So just different values, but same concept. Uh, and I, to be honest, like at this point, like once you start using it a little bit, it sounds a bit alien, but once you start using it a little bit, you kind of get used to it pretty quickly. Um, something that is to keep in mind is that any kind of integer value will just be like, like putting in th multiples of 360 in this. It was just like it would look as if nothing is moving. It's just like always just going full circle. That's why when we're doing the sine function, when we're doing the sine function to wavy lines or, or blinking, right? I always said like you want to put in something that is some kind of comma value because putting um, even integer numbers would just seem as if nothing ha is happening. That's kind of like a side effect of using these kind of blue values here, right? You wanna make sure that you're always putting in some kind of comma values to travel the circle. So yeah, let's just do that. Right, so here where are we adding something, we're not adding just an integer value, zero, like just fully one, because that's, again, that's just going fully around the circle. I'm just gonna add 0 0.1. You can see we're going around the circle. We're going down the circle. It'd be going very fast, 0 0.1, it seems like a very small number, but actually for going around the circle, it's a very, very high number. So I'm gonna make it even smaller. As you can see, we are going around the circle. There is a bit of a, sometimes there's a gap between the, the, the circle that we've drawn and the circle that we're calculating. You know, the math underneath is not quite exactly the same. But yeah, you can see, you can make something go around the circle and that's really, really nice. And in fact, something that is kind of like, um, it's, it, you can actually even think of this as a different type of coordinate system, right? So X and Y is one coordinate system that is kind of like your cardinal direction coordinate system where it's like X, vertical and horizontal. But you can also have kind of like think of, of a different coordinate system that, that uses different kind of numbers. Also two numbers, but uh, numbers that describe different things. We can have angles and you have distance. Angle distance, right? And so I'm gonna plug in the distance here, uh, uh, um, that's 15, that was kind of like the number that we multiplied sine and cosine with. That was the size of our circle basically, right? And then here on with the button presses, I'm gonna actually change the distance. We're gonna go distance uh, minus equal one and distance plus equal one, okay? And now we can see, I, I can like, basically, I'm, I'm kind of, it's kind of like an orbit simulator almost. I can go in and out of the circle, like closer to the center or out of the center. And I can rotate around the circle. Right? And maybe to make it even more clear, something that we haven't done so far, so that's maybe a good opportunity to do this, is we can draw a line. That's a line function. We haven't used this so far, but uh, I'm going to use it now. So line function takes four 
well, actually five uh, arguments. So it's going to be uh, two coordinates for the one point and two coordinates for the other point. And it will just draw a line between those two coordinates. And the fifth uh, argument is going to be just a color. So we're going to go X and, and uh, well, actually I'm going to draw, draw from the center. So 64, 64. So our line starts at the center, 64, 64. And it goes to our uh, coordinates of the, of, the, of the pixel that we're drawing. And we're gonna make it, we're not gonna make it red, we're gonna make it dark red too. And as you can see, now I can control this line. I can turn it, I basically made a, 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 a clock face, right? Okay, why am I going this? This is kind of like a refresher. This is like setting up kind of like a base understanding of how trigonometry works in Pico 8 because we are going to use this trigonometry to aim bullets because that's right this could be we can describe a trajectory of a bullet like this as well we can say like fire a bullet at this angle and this speed and it will you know the bullet will fly along a trajectory and that's actually quite often a more preferable way of controlling bullets than saying fire a bullet at this x speed and this y speed that's is actually quite not quite useful especially if you want to fire bullets at specific targets uh, it's easier or more useful when you're firing bullets to use angle and speed or angle and distance, right? To use this kind of like different type of coordinate system to describe the movement of those bullets. We are then going to use sine and cosine to convert angle and distance and, or angle and speed to X and Y values. Okay. Let's try that. Okay, so we are back at our firing function so far. And so far, this firing function is really, really simple. We just say like enemy fire something, right? And I'm going to rewrite this. And I'm only going to add two variables, two variables that we were talking about. I'm going to add angle and I'm going to add speed. Two variables or two arguments. And we're gonna use those arguments to calculate things. So here, SY is the horizontal, the vertical speed. And we just said like, okay, just like set it to two for now. And we're gonna think about things later. Now is later. So we're gonna use the same function that we just used in our little experimental program. Uh, we're not manipulating the position of the bullet right now. We are just manipulating the speed of the bullet. Um, but you can think of, you know, the, the, the line that we drew in our program, this red line that we drew, we can, you could think of this as kind of like an arrow, uh, indicating, you know, which direction the bullet is flying or which uh, position the bullet will be on the next frame, right? It's kind of like an arrow that's being shot in one direction. The longer the arrow, the faster the bullet is flying. So again, SX uh, for X sign, uh, we're going to use the sign of ang, ang the angle. Um, we don't have to actually, at this point, we don't have to add anything. We don't have to reposition it at the center of the screen. That's fine. Uh, we just need to multiply it by speed. And then we're going to do the same thing with uh, SY. Uh, we're just going to use cosine this time around. And that's it. That's all it takes. Now, when we fire bullets, we need to actually supply them now with an angle and a speed, and that's fine. Uh, where are we firing? So I'm gonna actually, I press Control F to search for fire. Uh, it, there we go. So yeah, this is where we're picking a, a, an enemy that fires. And so when we found an enemy that is, you know, protecting, that is not moving, uh, we say like, okay, you guy, you fire. But now we have to actually specify where and, and at which speed. So I'm gonna just like do zero and two and that will actually do nothing, but I just wanna make sure that there's no, no errors or anything. So let's try that. Okay, okay, that seems good, that seems good. Now, if you want them to now fire upwards, we would just go 0 0.5. That's the angle upwards. Again, that's, that's kind of the equivalent to 180 degrees, right? Let's do that. Now they're firing upwards. And if you want to, them to f fire sideways, 0 0.25. Now they should fire left. Left only for you guys. <laughs> There we go, the firing left. That's good, that's good, I like it. And again, seven, five, we'll fire right. Okay, 
Okay, you get the idea. And so now we can control at which uh, angle uh, the bullets are being fired. Amazing, good, helpful. So let us now approach the two tasks that we wanted to do. We wanted to aim shots and we wanted spread shots. Aimed, spread. Uh, from the two, uh, I think it might be actually easier, even though it seems like more effort. It might be actually easier to do the spread shot first. Let's do the spread shot. So uh, where is the fire function? I'm gonna find the fire function. This is the fire function. And I'm gonna create a new function called uh, a fire spread, okay? And then the fire spread function will take an enemy, that the enemy that does the, the, the spread. And then it will um, take the uh, uh, number, the number of bullets that are being spread, they're gonna be spread all around in a circle. Um, they will go in all directions. Um, and then it will take a speed at which the bullets are flying. So we are about to create a whole bunch of circles, uh, a whole bunch of bullets, right? And how are we going to do this? Well, you already know this. You already know this. We've done this multiple times already. Of course, we're gonna use a loop, a for next loop, the loop that we've began with. So we're gonna go for i equals one, two, just number of bullets that we wanna create. Uh, okay, okay, that seems good. Now inside this loop, we're gonna, we're gonna actually reference our fire function. So we're gonna actually do the fire function that we talked about. Uh, we're gonna use m my n as, a law, as the source of the, of, the, of the spread. The angle is, I'm not really sure what the angle is. We're gonna talk about the angle in a second, but the speed was we're gonna take from there. So let's just like, let's just like fire it at angle zero for now. And, or, yeah, I don't know. Let's just fire it at a random angle. That would, that, <laughs> That might be actually really funny and interesting. So now we're firing X amount of bullets at r uh, at uh, yeah at random directions. Let's try that. Let's see what happens. So now uh, the random shots are gonna be now fire spread instead. That's great. My and we're gonna fire eight bullets at the speed of two. What can go wrong? Okay, something is wrong. Um, oh, I printed hashtag num. num. Uh, this is num is not an array. Uh, hashtag num would be the length of an array, but that no, makes no sense. Num is just a single innocent variable. Yeah. See, that's actually a really, really cool attack. That's kind of like this weird random spread that's actually really difficult to predict. Oh, I love it. I actually love it. This is kind of like this, this, uh, this discovery. It's so good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that is, that's, that's, that's a serious, that's a serious challenge here. That, I love it. And I mean, if Pico 8 gives us the tools, why don't we just have some fun? 128 bullets, random directions. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's an impossible attack. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can't do this. It's too much. Okay, so now we have a spread shot, but it's a bit of a chaotic spread shot. Uh, usually when we do spread shots, when we talk about spread shots, we talk about spread shots that are evenly spaced around the circle. Um, right, let's just go back here and think about this. So we need to kind of like fi figure out the angle between two bullets uh, that we, you know, that we just need to the angle, right? We're gonna wanna have to make sure that we kind of calculate the angle. And usually it's like, you know, if you have like, let's say you have uh, eight bullets and we were working in degrees, 360 degrees, right? So we would go like 360 divided by eight and that would be the angle between two bullets, right? We just divide the entire circle in eight equal parts. Uh, but now we just have to go one divided by eight because now instead of 30, uh, 360, we're using one. Um, so one divided by eight, um, and, and we don't have eight, we have num. So one divided by num, that's the number of bullets we have. That's the angle between two bullets. So we can just take this and put it in here. 
and we multiply it by i, by the, the number of the bullet that we're currently drawing. So the first bullet is going to be a little bit at an angle, it's going to get shot. The next bullet is going to get even more of an angle and another angle and until we get all the way up to a bullet that fires straight down. Do we still have so many bullets? Oh no, no we, have, we, have, we picked a reasonable am amount of bullets. So yeah, that's good. Perfect. What el What more do we want to have? Well, something that you notice is that, uh, and that's something I want to also think about, is that you notice how the uh, the pattern, uh, it's always like, um, you know, there's always a bullet that goes exactly straight down. So it's always kind of like the same pattern. Uh, it might be clearer if we uh, have the same person fire over and over again. Can we, can we somehow do this? Can we somehow do this? We're going to see this maybe later. Maybe let's try to implement um, uh, the spread pattern on an actual enemy that I wanted to, to, uh, to use the spread pattern on. So let us go to wave number three. All right. So this is the enemy that I wanted to actually use the spread pattern a, a lot, especially when it does its its attack. That's like something I wanted to do. So let me let me actually take the the the, the fire spread this guy here and let me take this out. Let me just return the the regular fire function. And I'm gonna go to the attack function of the of the of the yellow guy. Spinning ship, there we go. That's the attack function of the yellow guy. And in the effect attack function of the yellow guy, I'm gonna say something like every couple of frames, I want it to fire a spread shot while it's moving downwards. Because we remember the the uh, attack pattern of the or the attack mission of the yellow guy was just slowly creeping downwards that's not very dangerous but if it's slowly creeping downwards and constantly firing bullets that's something different and especially if there are spread shots that go in our directions so let's try that uh, i want him to do this only if uh, he's above 110 so we're gonna uh, hook it, uh, hook ourselves into this if statement. So if it's um, you know very very low on the screen, then it will accelerate. But if it's not very very low on the screen, then if uh, and again we're gonna use the same idea that, as with the other timers, a t a modulo thirty uh, every let's say every second. Uh, if t modulo thirty equals zero, then and then we're going to fire the spread. That's it. So now the regular shots are regular shots. Nothing changes. But now he's attacking. Now he's coming at us. And now we can see he's firing the, the, the spread shot. The only problem I have with the spread shot right now is you can see how it's always basically the same attack. The bullets are always lying along the same axis. Maybe it will be more clearer if I do this really, really frequently. Uh, we're gonna turn it back to normal, don't worry. I just wanted to show you. Okay, so now he's really, really firing a lot of bullets, but it's always the same pattern. So if I'm, you know, in a safe spot, I don't have to actually move anymore. I'm not really encouraged to move. It would be nice if we had an ability to kind of like twist the entire spread shot. Basically what I want to do is kind of like a, have a, like an angle, like a base angle. I'm gonna call this base. And we're gonna add this base angle to the pattern, to the angle of, of each bullet. So we're gonna go i divided by num multiplied by i plus base. Bit, bit of a complicated equation here, but you know, we slowly derived it. So I think it should be fine. We're just adding a, a base and we're gonna here at the function because base should be maybe uh, optional. We might not have to use base. So we do like a little if statement here. We're gonna say like if base, if that's nil, then base equals uh, zero. Then there's not going to be any base. I'm going to run this and, and we're going to have exact same result. See, now he's firing a lot of bullets. The, the pattern is not changing. So we, if we just stay put, nothing, we don't have any problem. 
But now, to make things a bit more difficult, we can add a random number as the base. So it, the, all the patterns, all the new patterns, every, each pattern will have been twisted randomly. So uh, that's going to be a pattern that is a lot more difficult to, to avoid. Ah, see, <laughs> that's actually a really good pattern. I like it. <laughs> it's difficult to avoid it because it's random. And a lot of my players don't like the random. I have to say. Uh... <laughs> I did it, I did it. A uh, big schmuppa. Okay, so you can do the random, that's good. That's kind of like makes it uh, uh, really crazy. But you can also do something else. For example, we could do time in here. Remember time? Time is a function that returns the amount of seconds that have elapsed. And the nice thing about time in this case is that time res returns a comma value. So we kind of can spin the entire pattern uh, in the entire circle per per um, per second. So let's see how that looks. Oh yeah, see, we can now have like a real nice even um, spiral. We can divide it by uh, four. Let's divide it by four so, so the spiral is a bit slower. Uh, it's a bit slower, but still, ah, uh, it's not slow enough. Not slow enough, I feel. I feel it has to be even slower. Um, let's go 16, let's go really slow. Yeah, that's good. See, now you can see that it's just a spiral and now it forces me to slowly fly around the enemy or else I get hit because I can't really hit reliably those gaps in between the, the, the bullets. But if I follow the spiral around as it rotates, I kind of like, uh, I can avoid this pattern. Really good idea maybe for a boss attack. Let's remember this maybe. Right, for now I'm I'm kind of okay with just like doing being random a little bit, but also we're not gonna fire that often. Are you crazy? This is too often. Um, let's make it like 20. And I feel like um, one is good enough. Is good enough. Yeah, see? Maybe even that's maybe even uh, too frequent. Let's let's just go with 30. It's fine once per second. It's okay Yeah, that's good So he saturates uh, this guy saturates the, uh, the screen now and it's kind of difficult to avoid it because we spin the that pat pattern randomly uh, something I noticed is that the bullets are not actually coming. He has a little mouth and the bullets are not coming out of his mouth. So let us let us fix this real quick. Um, this is at fire. Uh, it's here, right? So we move the bullets a little bit so they are at the center of the small sprites, but it doesn't work for the big sprites. So we're going to go if my n dot type, if that's four, if that's the yellow guy, then we're gonna go. We're gonna use different numbers. Um, not sure what numbers are good. We're gonna. Well, we have to find out, right? Uh, we have to go. Uh, he's sixteen times sixteen, so maybe seven is okay. And then at twelve, I don't know. Let's try that. Se seven and twelve. Yeah. Hit it out of the park immediately. Let's, let's see how the spread looks. Spreads are quite often a bit deceiving because they, it takes a while until they leave the mouth and so it looks like maybe that they're a bit too low. Let's try, try 13. Yeah, no, this is good. We made spread shots. Now, sadly, this episode has been going for a, a while, I realized. So instead of like, just making another, like you know, going even further, because, you know, aiming is kind of like a topic on its own. Let's just go straight into the doggy zone. Right, the doggy zone today is going to be quite predictable. You saw that the spread shot function, the spread shot thing, 
is actually quite effective, right? Like it, you can create some interesting spreads that maybe turn or twist or hmm, there is a lot of potential. Or maybe there's like the spreads are coming from two different positions on the screen. There is a lot of potential here. So I, what I want you to do is to experiment with this. Experiment with different spread shots. I want you to create at least three different patterns that we, three different patterns that we could create, could use in a boss. Alternatively, another thing that would be also fun to try is what if the spread shot is not something that the enemies do? What if your own bullets are doing the spread shots? So can you add like a spread shot function to our own ship so we can just saturate the screen with bullets? I think that's a fun experiment to do, especially like if all the enemies start blowing up. I think this is kind of like a good way to just enjoy yourself a little bit. Uh, so that could be a second assignment. Uh, something you can also do is uh, right now they're going, the spread is going full circle. But you can also maybe try to make them the spread just limit to a certain area of the circle. So, you know, you go a spread shot in one direction, but not necessarily on the because, you know, when you use your own spread shot, you want the spread shot to go up. You don't need to shoot downwards, right? I just want you to have some of your own experience with this weird system that goes from zero to one instead of zero to 360. Uh, it is at first sight unintuitive, but it quickly becomes second nature, but you have to have your own experience with this. And this is your opportunity to get it. All right. Now comes the parts that you know comes at the end of each video where I give a big shout out and a huge thank you to all of the people that made this show possible. That's right, this video series has been made possible through the generous support of my viewers on Coffee. Thank you so much. And if you aren't a supporter yet, check out coffee.com slash lazydevs. Mm-hmm, yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. Guys, this is, you can see, this is actually turning into a serious schmup now. Like, like we have like, this is, these patterns are, I didn't expect these patterns to appear in the basic schmup, but somehow we landed here and we are going to whole sorts of different other places. On next episode, we are going to do the thing that I talked about. We are going to have aimed shots. And if there's going to be time left, we might shake the screen. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.